It's a little bit strange to write a rave review for a product that you know will soon cease to exist. But that's kind of the point of this trip report. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased, honest opinion. Am I an expert? That's for you to decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Delhi. This is the second part of a pair of Vistara videos, my previous video about my flight from Chennai to here in Delhi. Now I'm navigating the airport and transiting from domestic to international. If you'd like to know exactly what I paid for these flights or want to see my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. I already had my onward boarding pass, so after I popped back up here, I just needed to go through the normal security and immigration procedures. So, unless you've been living under an A380 sized rock over the past few months, you've probably heard about all of the changes that are in store for Vistara and Air India. A super brief recap, just in case. Vistara is owned by India's Tata Group and Singapore's Singapore Airlines. The airline began flying in 2015. Last year, Tata Group agreed to buy Air India from the government and have announced that with additional investments from Singapore Airlines, Vistara and Air India will be merged together of which Singapore Airlines will own 25% and Tata the remainder. Tata will also be merging Air India Express and Air Asia India together, but that's not part of today's story. In a bit of an ironic twist, my flight today got me access to Air India's business class lounge. After their poor showing in the domestic terminal in my prior videos, I wasn't expecting too much. Overall, the lounge is larger and more comfortable than I was expecting, but the food on offer was as basic and nearly as messy as the domestic lounge. Also, they had nothing at the bar, which they openly blamed on the government. Recently, the new Air India announced orders for 470 new aircraft, making it the most valuable order in civil aviation history. For context, Vistara currently has 55 aircraft, and Air India has 113. In a fun little fact, Singapore Airlines currently has 225 aircraft in service or on order. So just from their investment, Singapore Airlines is essentially doubling their fleet if you'd imagine that they'll own 25% of the new combined Air India and Vistara fleet. Even more recently than the aircraft order, Tata Group has, to the surprise of no one I guess, revealed that they will discontinue the Vistara brand as part of the merger which they're hoping to complete in 2024. But changes are already being made, but not necessarily at Vistara. Everyone knows Air India's reputation, I don't need to go into it here. And that's where all the changes that I've recently heard about have been happening at a breakneck speed. I do also have two Air India videos from Paris to Delhi and Mumbai that I published some weeks ago, so I could compare the two pre-merger airlines. Time to head to the gate and get our first look of today's 787-9. Currently, international routes are split between Delhi and Mumbai, with Delhi serving Europe and Mumbai serving the Middle East, with both serving Bangkok and Singapore. While waiting in line to check into the gate, I had my first taste of how good today's crew was just going to be who I later found out to be the purser, approached the gate supervisor and asked them to confirm that boarding would begin precisely on time, if not a few minutes early, in a way that was kind and professional, but also told me as the passenger, oh wow, we really are going to be boarding on time. He then asked her the precise minute at which the doors would be closed. They agreed on 135. Vistara currently has three 787-9s in their fleet with a further four on order. It's important to note that Tata has already committed to maintaining Vistara's full order books, which currently have 16 aircraft on order. Vistara uses their small widebody fleet to fly to Frankfurt, London Heathrow, and of course, Paris Charles de Gaulle. I love how big these gates are and clearly laid out boarding zones just make me happy. 
For today's flight, they actually started boarding with economy while they were finishing up cleaning the business class cabin. But we were still on time and boarded through a dedicated jet bridge. So I've already mentioned this during my Air Indy videos, but after seeing the products on today's flight, it really is hard to be anything but hopeful for the future of Air India. Tata Group saying, quote, The common goal of the joint venture is to redefine air travel in India and provide Indian travelers a seamless and personalized flying experience that blends together Tata's and SIA's service excellence and legendary hospitality. Before we step on board, let's check out today's flight stats. While the doors did actually close at 135, we still pushed back with a small 10-minute delay and we'd make our way up to 40,000 feet for our nine-hour flight to Paris, where we'd end up arriving bang on time. By the way, do you want to guess at how much Vistara paid me to make this video? The answer is, well, zero. Not only is this flight 100% self-funded, but Vistara had absolutely no idea that I'd be on this flight or who I was for that matter. In a world where content creators are recognized every day, I still maintain that I think the only way to give a true unbiased review is to fly anonymously. And so I really do appreciate every like, comment, subscription, or just glance at my Patreon as they really all do contribute to growing the channel and keeping the content flowing. A big thanks in advance for watching today. As I stepped on board, I was greeted by name by the purser as he pointed me to my seat. Vistara operates their 787s in a true three-class configuration, which uses Stelia seats in business class, the same seat that Singapore Airlines uses on their regional wide bodies, also the same that Turkish uses on all of their new wide bodies. Except, of course, for the ones they inherited from Airflot. There are a total of 30 seats in a single cabin in an alternating one-to-one -one configuration. Odd-numbered middle seats are best for couples, the so-called honeymoon seats. For windows, the even-numbered seats are true window seats, and note that row 5 is missing a window. For today, I was in 6 kilo. Seat measurements that are good or average are represented by white numbers, and to the above average, represented by green. One benefit of this seat is that both armrests fold down to make it a wider shoulder area when sleeping. Let's check out the different configurations on offer. First up, this is the window side seat from an odd numbered row which is further from the window. While the wraparound wing does provide a bit of privacy, you are much more exposed to the aisle in these seats. My preference by quite a long shot are the seats that are much closer to the windows. This is my seat for today. I will say it was a bit surprising though, uh, Vistara has a very vibrant brand identity, but I did find the interiors to be a bit drab, with lots of grey in every direction. Doesn't matter too much at this point though. I used to openly complain about this seat on Singapore Airlines, but on this flight, I finally found a really comfortable position where I put down both armrests and sit kinda catty corner against the shell's back. Super comfortable position. Each seat has a large pivoting IFE screen and quite a few other goodies waiting upon boarding, which we'll get into in a bit. Pre-departure drinks were offered, and while they came around with a tray of mango juice, coconut water, or water, they also asked if there was something else that you'd prefer. So I took a mango juice and asked for a sparkling water. I was also given a bottle of water to keep at the seat, by my very friendly member of crew for this flight. Seating controls are nicely laid out, and you won't accidentally bump into them easily. To the side of the seat is a pull-out mirror and a storage compartment which can be closed off and held headphones, socks, and eye masks upon boarding. Similar to Singapore Airlines, this seat has four or five different reading lights with multiple brightness levels each, and has a very premium feeling Alcantara-like material lining the inside of the shell. Hot towels were handed out and the doors were closed and armed at 1.35. 
the very clever yoga-themed safety video then began to roll. We pushed back and began a lengthy taxi to the takeoff runway. So, keeping in mind that Vistara only has three 787s, and I'm in one of them, it was pretty cool for me that right here, I could see the entire widebody fleet at the same time. After that, there were certainly some uh, interesting aircraft on display. And we lined up for a westerly takeoff. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up now. Alright, let's explore the amenities at the seat. First up, we have a very nice pillow that ticked all of the boxes. The blanket provided was substantial, but it almost felt like it had cardboard sewn into it, it was so stiff. Of all of the amenities though, the amenity kit was by far the highlight. Considering I just purchased some Forest Essentials products in the airport, fair to say I approved of the products inside, which were thoughtful too, such as pillow spray and facial mist. The socks, sleeping masks, and slippers were all decent quality, if not a bit scratchy. The headphones were the same that Singapore uses and were decent quality, but they always feel quite heavy on your ears. I definitely prefer mine, which also had a convenient hanging spot to the side. Today's first meal service was lunch and I started with another sparkling water along with some freshly brewed French press coffee, a signature of the airline in business class. The Starbucks co-branding is of course because Tata is the master franchise holder for all Starbucks stores in India. The IFE, it wasn't the most extensive selection in the world, but there were certainly plenty of titles to keep you occupied, considering Vistar only has three long-haul routes. There are also plenty of TV shows and some live channels as well. My favorite part though was the interactive moving map. While flying, you could touch on any city, no matter how small, that you were flying past, and it would give you the stats such as the population and the current time. Last interesting feature was a kid's version of the flight map, which as far as kid stuff goes has to be one of the cooler things that I've seen on any airline. Lunch was about to begin and some very crisp tablecloths were laid. Here's today's full menu. Note that the red price tags on the wine menu are my addition just to show you a current sample price of each bottle in USD. I went full vegetarian today and chose the paneer tikka masala, which was served with dahi bala, black lentil stew, and cumin rice, with paratha and crisps on the side. 
Unless an airline is positioning themselves as a super premium carrier, I have no problem with tray services. And actually, I usually appreciate them just for their efficiency. Every single morsel on that tray was devoured and absolutely full of flavor. For dessert, I went with the coffee parfait, which tasted precisely like my favorite cake as a kid, which was a cappuccino cake from Hands, a chain in the US. Crossing Pakistan, we enjoyed some pretty spectacular landscapes. A trip to the bathroom found spotless surfaces throughout the flight and all of the other amenities such as toothbrushes that you may need. There were also some larger ones with some pretty great views. While flying just to the south of Tehran, we had some spectacular views of the 18,000 foot high Mount Damavand peeking through the clouds. Speaking of clouds, a nap was in order. Here's a look at the full seat in full flat mode. I'll be honest, I actually very rarely sleep on flights, especially day flights, so I really appreciated the multiple rounds of snacks that passed through the cabin, especially the freshly popped popcorn. Then it felt like a bit of deja vu as we had views of Turkey's 17,000 foot Mount Ararat come into view. followed by one beautiful, peaceful sunset. After darkness fell, our second meal was served. I went vegetarian again and enjoyed my tandoori paneer and palak wrap served with garlic veggies, a Greek salad, and a really, really good linzer tart for dessert. If Air India's catering gets anywhere near what Vistar is serving up, and honestly, they use the same catering company so it shouldn't be that hard, I'd be a happy camper on my next Air India flight. After dinner, I had a nice chat with the purser about the impending merger and he, in, in the most professional and poised way possible, responded with sheer optimism about the future of the combined carrier after I told him that I flew over to Delhi on Air India. A final hot towel service was passed around and next thing I knew, I had to do a double take as we began to descend through snow. We approached Paris from the east and looped around before landing from the west. and our taxi looked a little bit like this. As we deplaned, the purser, standing by the door, thanked every single business class passenger by name for flying with Vistara today. If that's not a great lasting impression, then I really don't know what is. And no, he was holding no passenger list of any kind. Overall, this was a fantastic impressive flight. Vistara, as I kept thinking while on this flight, is precisely the airline that India deserves to have representing it. Obviously, Vistara, the brand, will retire soon. But I can only hope that the new Air India absorbs all of the great things that Vistara has built over the last eight years. I really hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my next few videos, which will feature one hotel in Paris and flights on French Bee, 
Austrian Airlines, and EVA Air.